The Bulls will once again be without Derrick Rose for the foreseeable future and now have questions up in the air. And baseball for the Tigers did get delayed, but rainy days don't stop us from talking about them. So get ready because the power play starts right now. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to the Power Play. I'm Pat Gunther here with Mr. Jared Joseph and Slick Mitch Rabelais. Boys, how you doing today? Oh, it's great to be here. I'm ready to roast Jared in this debate. Oh my goodness, I'm ready to cook your turkey if that's the case, buddy. Woo! Some feisty guys today. Well, guys, it seems like you two are both ready to get at it, so let's get right into it. Our first topic is one a lot of people are going to be talking about. Derek Rose is now out with a torn meniscus in his right knee. This is his second injury on that knee and third knee injury overall. So guys, what does the Bulls organization have to do about this situation now? They just have to, in a sense, they have to do what they've done but do it a lot better. Because Nate Robinson has already reached out to be a, have a reuniting with the Chicago Bulls. But the thing is, they're losing an MVP caliber kind of guy. So now at this point, they're going to have to see what they can do, what pieces they can get in maybe an additional you know great benchmark like Nate Robinson who's coming in or a good playmaking point guard because at this point Derrick Rose won't ever be the same again and just to see what Stephen A had said they're not part of the championship equation right now they can't be if you don't have that superstar and Joakim Noah is out um, you know he's coming back from that from his own injuries but even when he comes back they won't have that kind of chance to win because even when they make it into the playoffs they won't have that go-to guy that can get them buckets on the zone even in crunch time Mitch, what are you making Derek Rose getting bit by the injury bug yet again? You know, once again, I think his career has been, the injuries have shortened what could have, be, what could have been a great career. Um, uh, I think the Chicago Bulls need to look at trading him. I think they need to put him out on the block and see who will take him if there's a low market team that wants just that name right out there to sell some tickets. And I think they should look at trying to trade him away to get some draft picks because he's still worth money. He's still got a name. He's still going to sell seats. And for some teams, that's good enough but not for the Chicago Bulls, not if they want to return to that championship caliber. And if you can get him off your salary, and if you can free up that money to use for other young bucks coming out of the draft or other big guys out of there that can be your future, that's what you have to do. Absolutely. But, it's it, definitely it, interesting seeing you know, Jimmy Butler emerge as a star in his own right. And like you said, with all these guys out in injury, how will it play out it, come playoff time? It, but it, I'm going to have to take you on to the next topic, unfortunately. The Tigers get ready for another day of rest before hosting Southeastern tomorrow in the interstate game on the Diamond. Now, it was rained out. It was initially scheduled for today, but it has been moved to tomorrow. So, guys, based on the progression of this season, what are your opinions on the team? I'm going to start with you first, Mitch. I think this is a very strong team. I think they've got great pitching, great hitting. It's early in the season. They still have some things they need to work on. For instance, Michael Papirski needs to start working with his pitchers behind the plate. They need to start building a little bit more of a rhythm. Of course, we saw Chris Janais send two bats into the stands against Boston College. So they need to. There are little things they need to work on. The loss to Nichols State, I think, was a great learning experience for this team where they should never discount an opponent, where they should never take anybody lightly. And I think they did. And it's also worth noting that the last time LSU lost to Nichols State at home in the box was 2009, and they went all the way that year. So maybe a similar effect this year. JJ, what do you make of this? I want to say that's a great point that Mitch made. But and, and in all honesty, I don't think there's, a, there's the biggest discussion that I can have about this. And it's not in the sense of they're not doing good. They're doing what we expect. And, of course, Kate Civic's hitting about, um, you know, 500 lead in the team. He's doing his, his thing to help this team, you know, be as great as they can be. And they're 6-1, and one, but all the games have been at home. And they only had single-digit losses at the end of last season at home. They were 10-9 and nine on the road. So, in all honesty, we will see what we expect to see until we get to the Houston Classic, until they get more road games going. Because at this point, you, you know they're what I can say, almost an unstoppable force here at Icebox Stadium. And I say almost because, you know, they did have that, that upset. But um, any team can be beaten on any day, and they just have to remember that. But I think, you know, they learned their lesson. They, they, they destroyed BC, Boston College. Um, I scored them like 31-9 to 9 for the entire series. And even in that, even in that uh, Friday night game of the doubleheader, they learned, you know, they already know it, but at least they got to go through the experience of going down and then coming back because they gave up what maybe uh, – four runs in, that one, in the fifth inning of that game, and they had three runs themselves to take back the league 5-4 and then to go on to win the game. Absolutely, and that's a great point, the, the offense that they're generating. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the new baseballs, the lower team. Do you think 
Much like the pros, this is sort of marking a shift to a more offensive-minded game as opposed to pitchers and defense like it used to be? Oh, absolutely. I think um, I think sports has just progressed where we want to see scoring, we want to see excitement, and I think the lower team will add that. Of course, in Major League Baseball, they're talking now about shortening the strike zone to add to more efficiency at the plate because people want to see hits. They want to see that. And I think the more exposure you can get for the sport, in my opinion, the better because I think baseball is America's pastime, but because it so tedious and it takes so much time and so much of it is defense and pitching. There's such an art form to that that you have to understand that it has turned off a lot of people and I think if offense can explode and get people reignited in baseball, it could revive the sport. That is true. Offense does sell tickets and at this point, you made a good point. Baseball is America's pastime. Football is America's passion because there's more excitement with it and people don't want to always see a good defensive battle. You know, if they're not a baseball purist and fan of the game, they want to see home runs. They want to see triples and doubles coming out of the game just like they did Friday night against Boston College. So that's the kind of things that teams, that, that fans want to see. So, you know, trying to implement more of an offensive mind the game will do better for, you know, promotion for the game. Well, it remains to be seen what happens against Southeastern tomorrow at home, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. So for Jared Joseph and Mitch Rabelais, I'm Pat Gunther. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week here on The Power Play.